Before ARVs were available, some religious leaders and traditional herbalists thought they could cure the disease. On November 11th in 1989, the New Vision published an article about an elderly woman, Nanyonga, from Masaka District, who claimed that the soil from her garden could cure AIDS. Thousands rushed to her home, believing rumors that the soil mixed with some water had cured her niece, Margaret Naziwa, from the virus. Medical doctors at the time were frustrated by their efforts to push for healthy lifestyles and provide adequate treatment. <laughs> Adokana, a corolla, yet a cora, and we receive you say, I know Alsazi, I know Musuja, Kogamanogan of Kusang, Omun to Omu, Gaina, and what the Kumanasa. Katia Doctor Nathan Cook prescribing a full treatment would what Nogan of Kusang would one word is packet, Kirimuan packet in Anna. I think about Ganta, I know Jimila Munakusat. By that time, around 92, 93 there, to turn treatment by syndromic management. By the time ARVs were available in Uganda, some doctors were still afraid of coming in contact with HIV patients. While advances were still made in treatments, there was still a sense of stigma something which Philly Lutaya had personally experienced. Philly's feet and legs were still bothering him, but two Ugandan doctors had refused to treat him because they were afraid to touch an AIDS patient. Finally, a compassionate physiotherapist volunteered to help. Philly's experience with the doctors was not uncommon, and the problem was on his mind when he appeared before medical students at McCary University, Uganda's only medical school. I have been told that some doctors in Uganda need to be educated and sensitized towards AIDS patients. I have been told that some doctors in Uganda need to be educated and sensitized towards AIDS patients. Ngosoboro kusanga, ngoma zukutura bantu makumi atana. Na yenga muabu, wabanga mu abale tetu wabantu wabu. Ni baba dropping au. Kumuli yangu. Toja kusobora kumuhu, kangabamu kika uwe batu. Boni batambula ni bagenda. Echo kubiliti, durie ndagala. Yalingali ya kutambuli ya long distances. Na yo ralelo, tuina nature, tuita CDDP, nga... Plant, basuburo kuleti li dagala uole. No lifuni lao, no suburo kuwango tambla bulonji. And when they were first available, ARVs were hard to find. They were also too expensive and had terrible side effects like bleeding, diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart complications. This is why many chose to hide their HIV positive status from their partners and families. Still, my husband was sick and he was not really disclosing to me. But because I had the feel about HIV and AIDS, I could look at him and then, you know, testing with eyes. And uh, he was an army officer working with the state house. So he used to move a lot. This week he's not, in the, he's not there. He's, he's gone somewhere else, he has been deployed maybe to move, you know, wherever the president is moving, uh, he goes with that team. But at the same time, if when he, whenever he would come back, I would look at him, start observing him. I'm like, but are we safe? Yet he had tested and had hid his results. By the time I landed on his results, he was very, very sick. Given the reluctance around voluntary testing, programs were later created to encourage people to check their HIV status and, if found positive, seek treatment to avoid opportunistic infections. Whoever went for treatment for, for HIV, whoever test, tested reactive, would eventually get that information and, in fact, be told that you are not only going to take ARVs, 
but you are going also to take cotrimaxazole, which, which was known to fight opportunistic infections. For more interesting stories and artifacts, go to www.historyofhiv.ug. To participate in project research, free HIV counseling and testing, contact 0751-051-866 or 0779-452-176.